Uh, good morning. Let's make a start. Um, I'm Steve Ryan, and I have a pleasure of chairing this session. And I'm delighted to introduce Aaron Porter, who's vice president of the National Union of Students. I think it's truly brilliant planning on behalf of the organizers that Aaron follows directly on from Michael's discussion so we can continue the student-focused element. Um, Aaron's going to talk about a student perspective on institutions and the use of technology to enhance teaching and learning for the 21st century. So without further ado, over to Aaron. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks, thanks very much. And uh, I've learned something al already today, because uh, uh, I have learned that PowerPoint corrupts, and therefore, perhaps it was just co good coincidence, or uh, uh, that, that I haven't actually, I deliberately chose, I thought, how can I stand out uh, in this conference? And I thought, do you know what? I'm not going to do a PowerPoint presentation. It's worked out absolutely um, perfectly. Uh, at the start of the day, um, uh, Jilly Salmon talked about um, opportunities, and I couldn't agree with her more. I think we stand at a time where the opportunities for the way in which we can transform learning and teaching and the way in which students can experience that is absolutely astronomical, and the bounds are, are endless. And whether that's the way in which technology is being used in education prior to higher education and the, uh, the way in which students arrive with a different expectation and a different, um, a different uh, uh, set of skills um, that we should be able to try and take forward. Um, recently, uh, John Denham announced a series of reviews into HE, and uh, one of those was uh, uh, conducted by uh, Sir Ron Cook, and uh, he was trying to uh, put forward some views about how um, uh, technology could be transformed, could, could help to transform um, uh, higher education. But we're also uh, in a reality whereby there is increasing pressure on universities to diversify the kinds of students that we admit. Uh, there's also increased pressure in terms of ultimately delivering higher education on an ever-reducing budget, and the amount spent on uh, each individual student is, is likely to reduce. And I think that whilst that's challenging, of course, in many ways, I think it presents a lot of opportunities. And that's what I want to try and put forward um, over the next sort of 15 um, uh, to 20 minutes. I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit of time looking at the recent HEA report into uh, HE in a Web 2.0 world and, and make some sort of responses to that, because I think there's, there's lots from a student perspe uh, perspective that's, uh, that's very interesting. And then I want to sort of close by talking about what I perceive to be a massive disconnect in the eyes of students between higher education and the real world. Whether it's the student that has to sit in a room with a pen and paper for three hours, um, scribbling away in a, in a sports hall, I can tell you the last time I did that uh, was my final exam as, a, as an English literature student uh, at the University of Leicester. Uh, or whether it's the fact that some lecturers will turn around and say, sorry, can you put the laptops away uh, in the lecture theater? There are, there are countless examples of how a student, I think, sees what goes on in a university as completely removed from the world outside of universities, the real world uh, afterwards. And, and, and Michael touched upon that uh, in, his, in his presentation. And I think that we need to be honest about trying to make some changes to the way in which HE is uh, conducted. Uh, and I'm also going to uh, finish off by talking about um, students and the academic community, um, because I think that we've seen the, the reasons why students are going to choosing to go to universities, the way in which they see themselves as participants of their higher education uh, has changed considerably over time, uh, I would suggest. And I think fewer students, perhaps now than ever, genuinely see themselves as, uh, as active participants and members of an academic community. And I think the way in which students participate in things like social networking, they genuinely see themselves as part of a community. And I think, again, there's an opportunity there to allow that to be translated across to higher education so that we can see uh, and students can see themselves uh, as participants uh, in a higher education uh, um, uh, community. But I'm just going to sort of look at the, uh, the HE Web 2.0 uh, world and make some responses um, uh, to that uh, first of all. Clearly, I think it is important that when we look at that, we do talk about the uh, digital divide. Uh, and it was mentioned in one of the questions uh, at, the, at the start. But I don't think we can underestimate um, those that arrive in higher education uh, with a set of skills and, uh, uh, and, 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 those that, and those that don't. Particularly as we see a demographic downturn over the next 10 years or so, where there will be fewer numbers of 18-year-olds. 
I think it's important um, that whilst we continue to drive forward the quality uh, and the, uh, the volume uh, of technology that's used in the delivery of higher education, for those that turn around and say, well, there are some that uh, are, are, are not up to, up, up to speed and having the skills, that should not be a deterrent um, to uh, try and, uh, and push forward with the use of technology. What it means is I think universities need to think a great deal more creatively about thinking of the induction and the ways in which we can upskill students that perhaps arrive uh, without, uh, without the kinds of skills. And there are, um, uh, I'll cite my, my mum as an example, who has, uh, who's currently a teacher, uh, but would like to uh, uh, come back into higher education um, uh, to study uh, English, uh, as it happens, uh, because she's interested. Um, and, and the reason at the moment um, that she has said that she w she's not prepared to do that is she worries uh, that she hasn't got the skills, the IT skills, um, to, to survive in an HE environment. And I'm doing my best to uh, persuade her that, that there are ways that she can uh, uh, get around that. But I, I just I cite that as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an example um, of uh, universities need to be needing to be more upfront about what it can do to upskill those that don't arrive uh, with the skills or the confidence uh, to feel that they can participate uh, in, 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 in higher education. But I also think we need to think about the relationship between uh, the educational experiences that those have before uh, they arrive uh, in higher education. What, is, uh, what are universities doing to link up with um, primary schools and secondary schools um, so that, um, that there is a greater understanding of the kinds of skills uh, that students are getting in primary and secondary schools now? Um, when, I, when I get the opportunity, I try and um, talk, sort of talk about careers and the advantages of going to university uh, in a variety of different skills. And I'm absolutely uh, staggered in, in a really good way uh, about the use of technology that I'm, I'm seeing in some, in some secondary schools. But again, as I look at some of the conversations that happen at the top tables of some universities, I'm not sure that they're fully uh, up to speed with the skills that um, many sort of school children are, are managing to get. Um, and, and therefore, in some, for some students, arriving at university is often a step back uh, in terms of their interaction with technology. And I don't think that's acceptable um, for a higher education system that regards itself to be um, world class and genuinely trying to stretch um, students. And so I think that's an important challenge uh, that universities need to take right at the very heart of what they're doing. And if that, if that means genuinely including it uh, in a university strategic plan, if that's how we uh, engineer change in universities these days, then it absolutely needs to be taken seriously. Uh, and uh, I think there are, there are many students who uh, I come into contact, and they are, um, uh, in terms of expectation, uh, it's not met in terms of what they're expecting to get out of the use of technology uh, in their higher education um, uh, experience. Um, I want to link um, uh, use of technology and face-to-face and -face, um, contact um, because, of course, there's the uh, what I consider to be a myth between the uh, uh, between the sort of the, the uh, opportunity cost uh, between the, between the both of them. Um, at the start of the last academic year, uh, NUS did some research into the student experience, and one of the questions we uh, asked students was. Uh, we researched how much contact time, face-to-face -face contact, students were getting, and what their satisfaction was with that. 85% uh, uh, of students regarded the face-to-face -face contact that they got as excellent uh, or good. But I, I was also pleased that 75% uh, of students regarded the quantity of contact that they got to be uh, uh, excellent uh, as well. And I, I do find it troubling that um, uh, when I open pages of the, the Times Higher, I hope there's uh, no, no, no reporters in the, uh, in the room, that, the, that, that we continue to hear that students aren't getting enough face-to-face um, -face contact. I don't think that's necessarily uh, what students are saying. Yes, it might be the case in some universities, and perhaps um, uh, arts and social science students were slightly less satisfied uh, than uh, students in other subject areas. But by and large, students are satisfied with the amount of contact they get. And therefore, I genuinely think that gives us a platform um, to go forward and try and look at how we can um, uh, enhance what students get um, by a truly blended learning experience and utilising technology to provide more flexibility. Because the interactions that I get is not that students, as I say, are upset with the quantity of what they're getting. They're not necessarily happy with the flexibility in terms of when things are scheduled or the feedback that they're getting. 
And, and it seems to me that technology could play a particularly useful role in trying to solve some of the problems that students get around um, wanting to have a more personalised experience and greater flexibility about when they, for instance, uh, get feedback uh, on, 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 on work that they've um, uh, handed in. And I'm going to talk about sort of feedback and assessment uh, and, and, and link that into what I see to be the detachment between students going through a feedback and assessment process uh, and the world outside of, of higher education. Um, as I said, the last time I sat in a room uh, with a pen and paper and scribbled frantically for three hours uh, was, was essentially my last day at university, my final exam uh, as a student uh, at um, university. Why is it that so few universities um, are allowing students to uh, conduct exams uh, on uh, perhaps using uh, computers or laptops? Yes, of course, there's a question about um, are, there enough, uh, are there enough computers in a university? But I think we need to start being a bit braver. Um, ever, ever since I've left uh, university, um, I'm using computers on a daily basis. When I was writing uh, essays that I would submit, often the uh, first paragraph in, a, in an essay would be the very last thing that I write. Uh, and, and so the way in which I was thinking about essays uh, was very different during the term time. Uh, and and, and then, then when I got to the exam period, it was a very different experience that I was having to go through. And I think students recognize that as, as one, pre, uh, sort, of one uh, sort of example of that, of that detachment. But when it comes to uh, feedback, um, for instance, the common complaints around timeliness, legibility, uh, uh, not being delivered in a format that the student wants. Again, I think technology can play uh, a, a role in trying to solve some of these um, key problems. Um, I cite something called uh, sort of the Amazon solution to, uh, to feedback. Uh, I think the vast majority of, uh, or many students are sort of familiar with um, uh, buying something on Amazon where you can track the purchase throughout. So you select something, you can see whether it's been sent from the warehouse, whether, it, whether it's ready for collection. You can leave feedback on the process uh, and other people can read your feedback. And I don't think something dissimilar uh, would, would work, uh, wouldn't work for um, feedback. Why is it that I, I don't see uh, any university systems where a student hands in their piece of work and they can then track the feedback? They can see whether it's been collected, whether it's been first marked, whether it's been second marked. The, uh, the feedback's been left, perhaps, uh, in, in a computerized format. Students can then respond to that feedback, perhaps electronically. Um, and then maybe other people could then uh, interact and look at the feedback uh, as well. So again, I think technology could play uh, an absolutely uh, prime role in solving one of the biggest problems as borne out by the National Student Survey uh, and also uh, the, uh, the, post the, the HEA's Postgraduate Taught Survey as feedback being a problem um, for, uh, for uh, postgraduate uh, taught students um, uh, 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 as well. Looking at students in the, uh, as participants in an academic community, as part of the research that NUS did looking into the, to the student experience, one of the questions that we asked right at the very beginning was, what was the main reason that you chose to come to university? And it was striking that over 60% of uh, students um, said that, the, that the, key, the key reason for coming to university was for career enhancement, career, career progression, uh, or to, to sort of get a step up uh, uh, on, on the career ladder. Um, I don't have any longitudinal data about whether that's different to where we were before. But what was particularly striking was only 22% of respondents cited what we called, uh, or what I, I, I tried to describe as academic uh, reasons, that they were particularly uh, interested in the subject, that it was the, uh, something that they wanted to be stretched, intellectually stretched by. Um, uh, and, and, and I think that, that, that sense of not being part of an academic community is proliferated for, for a number of reasons. I'm not going to use this platform to talk about the way in which I think fees has changed the way in which students uh, consider themselves, but I think undoubtedly that has had a role. But I do think we need to uh, not see that as an excuse for not wanting to get students to consider themselves as part of an academic community, but rather try and find what the solutions can be to get them considering themselves in that way, or at least greater numbers considering themselves uh, as part of an academic community. I do think that the induction process is a fundamental uh, that we can try and change that. Spend uh, myself when I was a, when I was a student would spend hours uh, over the course of a week and often on individual days as part of networks, um, whether that be uh, whether, whether that was on Facebook or on uh, or, or on Twitter. And I genuinely considered myself actively part uh, of a community um, there. 
I didn't particularly see it uh, as, as any kind of academic um, community, and I do think it's interesting to see um, how we can try um, and stimulate a sense of academia through um, social networking. I don't think we should be trying to force students to come into different territories. We should be looking at where students are um, taking part, where they're gravitating toward, um, not trying to take over uh, th those territories, but getting students to think about how they can utilise it themselves um, in, a, in an academic um, uh, way. And unfortunately, I, I don't have the, the, the answer um, uh, for that. But unquestionably, um, uh, when, I look, when I looked back at what my, some of my interactions were, often I would use things like uh, Facebook to have a discussion about a particular um, seminar or, suggest, or, or, or try and find out uh, what might be a good essay to read and follow up to a, uh, a book uh, that I'd read. Sometimes that was part of a group discussion, sharing ideas and exchanging ideas. Um, and, I won't pretend that that was the primary uh, way in which I used something like Facebook, but that was a part of what I, uh, I, I used it for. But yet, whilst I was a student, I didn't in any shape, uh, any way, shape or form, consider my interaction on something like um, Facebook as part or, uh, uh, or adding to my academic experience. And I think it is interesting that I, I presume that over the coming years, students will continue to use it might not be Facebook uh, in a couple of years' time. Uh, it might be something different. But how can we try and get students to stimulate um, their, their thinking about how they're utilising um, some of these uh, uh, social um, uh, uh, networking? I want to return to the, the question of uh, closing the feedback loop and also the role in which uh, technology uh, might, have to, might have to play um, here. Um, so many uh, one of the questions that we asked in the research was, how many students feel that you get the opportunity to give feedback on a, on a particular module? And 92% of respondents, this was an undergraduate, 92% of students said that they felt they were given the opportunity uh, to give feedback on their, on their module. Yet only 25% of um, students uh, felt that their feedback was, was acted upon. And as someone that sat on staff student committees, I know that in my particular department, they actually used to spend a fair amount of time looking over the module evaluation forms uh, and making future and trying to suggest future changes and ultimately making some changes out of the feedback that students had given. But that wasn't ever, uh, as far as I was uh, aware, obviously um, given back to, to students. Um, and I link that to being part of an academic community. For someone that's giving feedback and giving ideas um, and not to get any response and to be blanked, it's quite easy to then feel that you might want to withdraw from that particular, um, particular community. And I would say again that feedback uh, is, is, uh, is instrumental in trying to foster a sense of community. And again, I think it's something that universities perhaps don't, so, don't do quite so well. So how can technology perhaps play a role in trying to make some solutions? Um, I don't see many um, online module evaluation forms. Surely it would be much quicker to process the results, maybe send uh, a, an email back within a week of some of the top line, um, top line results. Um, I, I do think we need to think a little more creatively about how we can uh, use technology to communicate with students and to get them thinking about being part uh, of, uh, of a community. I want to close by saying that uh, there's a lot of talk in the UK about having a world-class higher education system, and I think by and large we do. I think there's some high-quality teaching, um, undoubtedly um, some uh, world-class uh, research, and we've got a diversity of different kinds of institutions that we should be truly proud of. But as I look forward and try and perhaps to forecast what might happen over the next decade, the next 20 years, we're seeing lots of very uh, exciting and other emerging uh, higher education systems uh, across the world. And I think, and I genuinely think, that for the way, the, the way that the UK can um, uh, create uh, its, uh, itself a real competitive edge over some of the other systems is to think about how we take a lead now in utilising uh, 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 technology and really thinking about how we can transform the lives of students that go through a higher education um, uh, system. There's lots that we do well at the moment. I don't think there's nearly enough sharing of, uh, of good practice across to, within, within institutions uh, and across uh, institutions. But uh, the, the expectation of students is starting to change, and it's changing in a very quick way. And so uh, the things that I would finish off by saying is that I think universities need to think a little more uh, carefully about what skills students are arriving with at university. They need to be a lot more explicit 
um, about the um, training and intensive skills for those that don't feel confident to use um, uh, IT and uh, other forms of other forms of uh, a, a technology. And finally, I think we need to see technology as a real solution for getting students to think of themselves as part uh, of an academic community. And I'll stop there and leave some time for questions. Thanks very much. solution to the institution's problems and the more that they think in terms of the students as being sort of raw material that gets processed and kind of degreed up and then they're stored, um, the less students will feel that they're being inducted into an academic community. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I wonder whether you agree that we need to think in terms of, um, of, of, um, of helping our students become kind of masters of their Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. Um, uh, stop me if I if I go off track. But I, I think that first and foremost, the universities um, have to accept that um, optional route through school, particularly school to university. The motivations for those coming to university is something that I think universities are going to struggle to shape before we get there. Um, so I think that means we need to be the onus is when students arrive to be genuinely. Cha I, I, I have no problem with universities wanting to be and trying to be genuinely challenging with students when they arrive, asking them questions like, "Why have you come here? What are you planning to get out of it? What can you? Wh what should you be different? Uh, what what should be different about you in terms of the way that you think, the way in which you learn um, by the time that you leave?" And I don't hear those questions being asked, and, and I think there is a role for uh, and, and I'm. I'm Undoubtedly, I think we can use technology to start stimulating um, uh, some of those things because in some ways it's more obvious to show your sort of contribution towards some, some, some sort of work through, um, uh, I'll start in particular, I mean, wikis, for instance, I just think is a, is a, is a particularly good way in which, um, you know, we can facilitate group work, students can see the contribution that they've made, it's part of a bigger piece of work. Um, why, aren't, why aren't, for instance, undergraduate students sometimes making contributions towards, um, you know, some of their professorial staff that are doing bigger pieces of work? Students trying to make a contribution toward things like that. I think that students will see themselves as genuinely trying to be part of, uh, of an academic community. Um, and, and there's, there's lots, more, um, uh, lots more besides, um, but fundamentally, uh, we need to go back to basics to think about the challenging questions that we're asking at the start, because it, I don't think they exist. Back to basics, then. <laughs> Follow-up questions. You won't get them. <laughs> <laughs> Sad, isn't it? <laughs> Anybody got any more questions or points they want, want to raise? Now? Okay, well, I, I've Get off got lightly. Oh. <laughs> you, you mentioned the use of, of wikis. Indeed, you talked about social software a, and other tools. What kind of advice would you give uh, teaching staff in using or trying to introduce these tools to students? And isn't there a danger that they might appear to be trying to jump on a bandwagon they perhaps don't fully understand? A couple of things spring, spring to mind. Um, I, I think students are acutely aware of staff that have thought um, perhaps a bit more uh, deeply about genuinely integrating the use of technology into the way in which they're delivering a particular uh, module or, or particular sort of series of, uh, of teaching and staff that have just sort of uh, bolted it on. And there's also, I think it becomes pretty obvious pretty quickly, a member of staff that's not particularly proficient 
uh, at, the, at the use of technology, sometimes that can become obvious. And I think that can often be quite disconcerting um, for students if that isn't dealt with uh, in the right kind of way. So I think there's, there's some stuff about sort of staff development there uh, a, a, as a first. But I also think there's some uh, critical, I wouldn't call it ground rules, but they sort of are ground rules, which need to be established, particularly if you're doing something like uh, group work through the use of a, uh, of a wiki. Lots of students, and I, I, I find this a bit disappointing, but lots of students, their initial reaction to things like group work is they're, they're worried that either they're going to be the student that's <coughs> gonna do all the work and they're not going to get the recognition that they deserve, or they're gonna be lumped with someone they really uh, don't like. But I think if something is introduced uh, in the right way, and perhaps there's some honest, uh, and I think the students themselves, if they're genuinely left to draw up the rules themselves, um, I, I think that's the fairest way uh, for them to go through that process. And so long as those rules are justly applied um, afterwards, I think you can get a lot, hell of a lot out of uh, group work. I was, I, uh, just the exchange of ideas. Often, um, I did a hell of a lot more private study uh, um, when I was doing group work or work outside of the, outside of the formal co contact time when I was in group work than I ever did when I was doing uh, individual work. Um, and I think that's an additional benefit that we would see um, as well. But I think it's establishing the ground rules, getting the students to establish the ground rules, and then a track record of that being um, justly um, sort of applied um, afterwards. Thank you. There's a hand up over there. I'm in the just direction. So. I've just, uh, well, I mean, in terms of my, my personal experience, I mean, I, I, I actually used to feel quite comfortable um, when I had lots of things going, and I think the reason for that is, um, I don't know whether this is a personal thing or, or something that's more general about uh, the generation that, that I'm in. I would get quite anxious if I didn't know what was going on in a series of different places. So I, I, I'd be quite anxious if I didn't know who had uh, uh, just twittered or um, uh, the, the rolling scores on the, uh, on the BBC Sport website whilst I was writing uh, an essay. And I, I, <clears throat> whether that has a, a positive or a, or a negative impact on, on the, 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 you know, the, the work that I was writing, I, um, I, 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 you know, I, I don't quite know, but I, I, I had a sense of anxiety if I, if I didn't know what was going on elsewhere. And the ability to just flick between various different windows was something that I found uh, quite, uh, quite reassuring. Um, uh, I mean, it, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's stuff on, um, on, uh, on uh, damage to mental health is astonishingly poor research. Um, read Ben Belvedere on the social plot and some of his responses to some of these articles. Right, I think it's it needs to be taken in a new room of some sort. <laughs> And on that erudite note, I think we'll have to call this session to a halt. Aaron, thank you very much indeed.